Let's begin the show Teaching you things you didn't yet know Geometry twist and let your designs flow Grasshoppers the path, watch your brilliance glow Click, drag, drop, don't overthink Wire those nodes, watch the pattern sink Abstract dreams tied to logic's break Grasshopper magic in every link Curves and grids, they're yours to control From parametric wonders to a modular soul Step by step, watch the panels unfold Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this grasshop tutorial, I want to show you how you can make this parametric design of a tensile arc corridor uh, in Grasshopper using a simple technique. Uh, let me turn off the algorithm and explain this step by step. The first part of the algorithm is just like a parametric curve. Uh, to create a parametric curve, you can skip this step if you want to. You can just disconnect that and draw a curve yourself. For example, I can draw an arc and give it to this and internalize it so it's completely inside Grasshopper. So as you can see here, you can use any curve you want here or if you want to, we've just made a simple uh, parametric interpolation curve. You can make it from curve uh, interpolate and uh, it's just like a series of uh, points that move in the x direction but their y direction is defined by a graph mapper so uh, you can just define the domain which is going to be the length of it and then uh, bring the same number of range graph mapper between 0 and 1 and then remap it using the domain remap numbers with a bounce to a new domain which is going to be the maximum height it's going to reach. Good thing about this graph mapper thing is that uh, always when you use a graph mapper you can combine them. So if you want to you can say control C control V and for example we can make this a busier distribution to control the curve. That's going to help you to make it parametric. But anyway, this is just like a parametric curve. I'm going to save this if you want to use it later. Okay, when we have the curve, uh, the concept is really easy. What we want to do here is to make a series of arc tree points uh, around this curve. Uh, to do that, you have to use the curve primitive and arc uh, arc menu and arc three points with three points. Okay, uh, the first point is the division. So simply you have to use the curve uh, division divide curve and you just divide that into any number of divisions you want. That is going to be the first point. Uh, the second point is going to be a movement uh, from in the direction. You can use a perpendicular frame maybe if you want to, but this is just like a good exercise to understand. So what I've done here uh, is rotate the tangent vector. So assume that this is the tangent of each of these points, okay? So this is the tangent. What we're going to do is to rotate them around the z-axis, 90 degrees, and this is going to be the vector. And then use that to move it. If you want to, you can use an another technique here, just like similar to that. And that is use the curve perpendicular frame, Divide it to the same number of amount you want. Vector plane deconstruct the plane. And use the x direction to move the point. Okay, so that's also possible. But anyway, uh, amplitude, you can use the vector, vector, amplitude. Multiply that with a number. And that is just like the arc span. But because we wanted to make the span, we divide it by 2 and also give it a negative. And that's going to make it, for example, minus 3 and plus 3. So we have it both ways. If you use an offset situation, for example, give that to the D. And maybe the division by 2, I mean. And control so control V. Remember that you can do things different ways. That's the good thing about param parametric, so it doesn't really matter. But if you want to do that and then divide it here, uh, 
you can see that it's going to be uh, exactly the same. Right? So you can just do any way you want. This is a good example of uh, playing with the tangent vector and rotating it. Anyway, now that we have these two points, we list item them because we have two. We use the set list item and bring them as uh, the first point and the second point. So that's going to be the two points we have for the arc three points. Uh, okay, for the top part, what you have to do is to move those division points uh, up. Uh, I've grafted that because we have all in the uh, uh, graft data here, as you can see here. And uh, for the T, for the unit Z, we've just made a graph mapper again, a series of numbers with this range. The number of division is going to be the same of the division curve. Uh, a graph mapper can help you to make it like a uh, a tractor like with a graph mapper and the minimum maximum height. Okay, let me just turn off the kangaroo plugin because that is slowing down the process. So you can see that this graph mapper, how it's affecting it. Okay. And we can also just disconnect this part so you see that how it's moving. Okay. So that is also useful. You can use different graph mappers and define the minimum maximum. Remember that if you bring this higher than this one, it's going to be obviously higher at the end than at the middle. Okay, so that's also possible. Okay, after creating the arc three points, uh, there are different techniques we're going to talk about that we have made the surface here, the root surface. Uh, now that we have the arcs, uh, we want to uh, bring them down because that's going to be the pipe. So if we have this arc here, we flatten that and give it a pipe. That's the pipe radius just for visualization. And obviously that's just for visualization of the arc. Uh, the next thing we have to do is to create the structure for kangaroo plugin. And because we have to bring it down the pipe, uh, the same amount that we have here, we just use the curve utility offset loose instead of offset curve, it's just like a faster way and give that a minus. So it's going down to be at the bottom of the pipe. And uh, we'll use the technique here, which is subcurve to pick a part of that. Obviously we want the structure, uh, the tensile structure to be a part of it. So as I increase that, you can see that it's making it smaller. So uh, the concept is really easy. If you have a domain here from 0 to 1, you can say that, okay, I want to start from this to this. So if it's like 0 0.2, for example, it's going to be from 0 0.2 to 1 minus 0 0.2, right? That is going to give you a, a subcurve with symmetrical output here. So we have the subcurve here. And now that we want to loft this together, this is a really cool technique you can use. So if you go to the set tree and use this relative item, when you have a series of curves and you want to connect them one by one, you can use this relative item. All you have to do is to uh, put the wrap uh, of data and index to false. Okay, they have to be false because we don't want the last one to be connected together. And all you have to do is to define the offset here. Okay, it's like similar to a list item of a shift list, something like a similar to shift list. And something, com a combination of shift list and shift path. Okay, this one is really cool. You just have to say, okay, I want, if you want the group A, Assume that this is one of the data coming out from group A. You say uh, shift this in, uh, I think that's going to be the groups. So go with red. Plus one means go to the next group and the index is zero. So this, this is going to be group B. Okay. So remember that you can always use this technique uh, for the output and it's going to give you the relative items and you can loft it together if you want to. But if you want to loft it together, what you have to do, explain this, you have to graft and then give it to loft. So it's going to have two surfaces loft together. This is loft. And this is root surface. 
You can see it's similar, so it doesn't matter. Use loft or root surface. The good thing about root surface is that you just use the surface freeform root surface between two curves and you just give it to the AB. You don't need to graft it and you will have the surfaces. Okay, now that we have the surface because we want to use it in kangaroo, uh, what we have to do here is to... Let's also turn off. So I call this, right? And at the end, we have this custom preview. Okay, so that is for visualization. Let's go to the kangaroo part. So we have to convert these surfaces into a mesh. Uh, we've used the mesh utility mesh surface to divide that into a UV division. And just for a simple one, then 10 by 10 is okay. Then we have joined them together with mesh join. So if I bake that, you can see that this is going to be the joint mesh. The kangaroo part is really easy. Uh, what we have to do here is to use the uh, main solver, any solver you want. So for example, bouncy solver. But to enable this and disable this part and just show you the meshes. Okay. So now that we have the root surfaces, we divide them into a mesh surface. Uh, one of the goals we have to always use is the show. So we've used the show as the first goal. Another thing we will have to do is to use the goals mesh edge length to make it like a tensile structure. You just have to give that a leg factor, which means a multiplication. If you put it to zero, it's going to be uh, really smooth. And it means that they can uh, actually have small edges. If you put it to one, it means that they can't deform much. So just change this number based on your project. Okay. And you can reset that simulation anytime. Uh, we just have to define two things. One is an anchor. For the anchors, we have to find the points that are on the edge. So for that, you can just deconstruct the mesh. Mesh deconstruct. Get all of the points here. We have. And we just dispatch them. For dispatching, you can use different techniques. For example, this one is... We've pulled them all towards the subcurve, pull it towards the base curve. And when you pull it, pull it, you use the vector point pull points, and it has a closest only. It's just like CP curve. So it's going to project that on the ground, uh, on the curve, sorry. And when you have that, you can test if, uh, if the distance is really small. Obviously, those who are smaller are going to be on the pipe, or the, uh, sorry, on the arc. And those who are not are going to be for a force we bring them down. You can actually disable this force. And it's going to go up, but we're going to give that force later. Anyway, uh, we, say get, we say that this, these points are anchors. We give that to the goals. Another thing we want to do here, let's go to the kangaroo. Uh, we can use the force, goals point, load. And for the rest of the point, we say we bring them down. So you just give that. A vector, the vector is minus uh, 1, which is obviously in this direction, minus z. And we can just give that a weight. We just have to add that here. Uh, another thing you can do instead of load is to use the goals mesh. I think there is something called vertex loads. You just give the mesh to this one. And the strength is... When you give it minus, it's towards the ground. So if I use that as the force, you can see this is also going to give you different results. From uh, minus 1 to 1 with maybe 3 decimals. This is really too much, so I'm going to just decrease that. And a good thing about this is that you can change the weight. Maybe you want to make something like this, but anyway. Let's go back to the loads and give that to the goals. And again, you can see by increasing this, it's going to give you a relaxed force like this. And that's going to give you the outputs. Because we have given the show to the first goal, uh, we have to pick up the first output, which is the mesh. That's why we have used the list item index zero. And we pick uh, all of the meshes here like this. Okay. Now that we have them, uh, we just had some additional steps we've taken here. 
the mesh is output from here and custom preview and some uh, mesh edge previews. So you can see it here, right? Uh, another thing is that if you want these uh, arcs here, you want to visualize them, you can use the curve uh, mesh uh, edges and get all of the edge uh, naked edges actually, I think. So it's naked edges. And you can join them together. By joining, it's going to give you this output, which you can use that in your project. And for that, we can just simply use a pipe mesh if you want to. Hufferfish plugin, for example, if you want to give it a mesh. Uh, a mesh pipe is not bad. You just can visualize it better, really fast, instead of using a pipe. You can see how slow this is. And the reason is that it has to make it a NURBS and this is like a polyline and those things. So it's better to use the Hufferfish plugin, just give it a radius. Uh, you have to just divide the V because you want the division it has to be uh, the basically number of faces you see here. Okay, it's going to be six. V increase that it has to uh, has more details and anyway that will give you the ring cable that's it that's all about this algorithm and you can use that uh, i hope that this is useful and if you have any question ask below this lesson see you next time bye remember that you can download these uh, example files all from our website parametrichouse.com and remember to subscribe to our channel like this video share it with your friends and let me know in the comments uh, if any additional uh, examples you need so we can record the tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.